Hey, this is Seth with In Demand Career. I show people how to get life-changing jobs in digital marketing with no previous experience or education. And that includes my very special guest today, Xavier, who was working as a car washer with no college degree, took my course, ended up doubling his salary and working remote as a digital marketer. He is now very, very happy. So I'm very excited to share his story with you. Thanks for being here, Xavier. Thank you for having me on, Seth. It was good meeting you. My pleasure. So why don't you tell people a little bit about your current job and what you're making there? All right. So currently I am a local marketing specialist for a marketing agency in Minnesota. Um, I'm based in Atlanta, though, so I'm fully remote. Um, I pretty much do anything that's related to Google My Business, um, Google local search ads, Yelp, Bing, um, like reputation management, Literally anything in the local marketing sphere is what I do. Awesome. And so, and that's definitely more of an SEO focused job, right? Yes. Yeah. Cool. And what are you making at this job? So I'm at 52 right now, but um, I have like, they have like incentives and stuff like that, that I can get raises through. Okay. And so that's 52,000 a year. And how yeah. long have you been at this job? um three weeks now so you've been there for just a few weeks you're brand new um do you like the job or are you enjoying yourself you know man i'm really enjoying this job um i i just like being remote uh, i mean i'm at my house right now and i'm always here I, i'm a homebody so i enjoy working from home and just chilling out right after the job is over so yeah i enjoy the work and i like that i like digital marketing essentially so Anything that I can do digital wise, I'm going to be happy doing it. That's great. That's what I like to hear. So um, why don't you tell people a little about how you got here, what you were doing before you found the course and uh, like, you know, how all that happens. Like, what were you doing when you discovered my course and, you know, and got into it? I was in college when I found you and dropped out. And um, I just did a whole bunch of odd jobs. I ended up cleaning cars, selling cars, a whole bunch of stuff. But um, the pandemic hit and right when that hit, I was furloughed. I mean, they said I wasn't fired, but I wasn't working and I wasn't getting paid. So I was pretty much fired. Um, and at the, that moment, I was like, man, I have to get some skills. I have to be able to work during times like these. And uh, so I took the course, I took it like three times. Um, I built a couple of websites and then I started freelancing like maybe a month after the course was over. And uh, from there, uh, I just started applying, just slinging my resume out there and got a job. Yeah. Awesome. So <laughs> so go, go just to a couple of details, you mentioned to me you were washing cars and then briefly selling cars. Uh, how much were you making when you're washing cars? Just so we have a base. Oh, man, I was making uh, $12 an hour washing okay. cars. And then my first SEO job, I ended up making 24 an hour. So it's a pretty huge jump. <laughs> that is a huge jump. That is literally double. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you, you took the course during the pandemic, you took your time, you went through it a few times, you did all the work, you hustled. That's like the most important thing you'll hear people say again and again, then you started applying and tell us about the first. So this job you have now, now is your second job. Tell people about your first job and how all that happened. So, um, I was on Indeed, actually, um, on Indeed, I just looked up SEO specialist. Um, I chose SEO because I felt like it was just better. I don't know. I think I don't really like PPC. So I was just like, let's choose SEO. So I chose SEO, looked on Indeed and, um, you know, did the filters, entry level remote. Um, yeah, I was just throwing out my resume and it was a marketing agency based in New York. And they called me up, asked me to interview, and um, they hadn't, they, they were a new agency, so they had never hired an SEO before. And um, you could kind of tell that. And uh, um, so I, I worked for them for like a couple months and realized it wasn't for me and just went on, the, uh, on to the next one, essentially. So a couple of things. So first of all, and by the way, guys, we get people who love PPC. We get people who love SEO and feel this, you know, it's all, it's kind of like baseball versus football. I mean, you know, some people <laughs> or basketball versus hockey. I don't know. People love, some people love SEO. Some people love PPC. Some people love both. Um, but 
so you're freelancing, you got hired. And when you say it wasn't for you, um, what do you mean? Um, we're going to talk more about your current job, but I'm just curious because you were making more money. Um, was it, it was remote because they were in New York, you're in Atlanta. What was the deal with the first job? Um, they were, I mean, honestly, they just weren't a good marketing agency. We were losing clients like very, uh, very rapidly. Um, I remember one week we lost four of our like 10 clients. So I was like, okay, there's no way they're going to be able to continue to pay me, let alone keep like the lights on or anything like that. So I just felt like it was a uh, building on fire that I should get out before it collapsed, essentially. Wow. You're keeping it real. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah. Like... And, and <laughs> I always think like, well, my, my family works in corporate America and they always tell me like, oh, you got to put your, uh, put your dues in and just like be nice to all these people. And I'm like, man, they're, they're not going to care about me. So I might as well just care about myself. Well, that is actually a good point, guys, because ultimately you are a free agent in this industry. Um, you should, I mean, build good relationships. Don't be a dick, you know, don't like screw right. people over. Right. But, but ultimately like I get people where they say, Oh, I feel really loyal to this company. I'm like, dude, there's no such thing anymore. You're a free agent. You're Barry yeah. Bonds or whoever <laughs> the hell else is relevant these days. I can't believe it's <laughs> me, right. You're LeBron, right. You, you are a superstar with your skills, so you should be always be making sure you take care of yourself. So how did that happen? So let me, this, this is an interesting, this is a very real account. You're not, it's not like roses. You're like, oh crap, my, my, my great job that pays twice as much is probably gonna go away soon, but I just started my career. How did you pivot to this, this new job? Well, in my freelancing, I've been uh, working with, uh, in my freelancing, I've been working with uh, the home services industry. So like plumbers, roofers, anything like that. So they all need local marketing. And after that, I just kind of researched local marketing jobs and there really aren't many, but um, I did find one and they happen to specialize in roofers. And I had already had experience in roofing and, um, and just construction in general. So uh, it was a really good fit for me. Um, I was doing the same marketing I had already been doing with um, with my freelancing, with like the construction and everything. So it ended up working out well. So that's pretty awesome. Because first of all, you talked about like niching down, which is great. Like you already picked a niche, which is this particular industry. And now, you know, a lot of agencies are like that. Like, well, some agencies, they have all different wacky verticals. You know, mm -hmm. my first agency was like everything from like car dealers, lawyers, and like people selling, you know, dog disposal units and parks, every different thing you think of, but other agencies are much more niche focused. So that was very smart. Um, I, I'm not sure what you meant about there not being many local marketing jobs. There are thousands, um, you know, in SEO and PPC. I mean, that's what these jobs are. They're all, you know, most, most people advertising in PPC and doing SEO are local businesses. It's not, there's only a handful of big corporations like Walmart and every other business in the U S or in the world is a small business. So, you know, did you, was that based on your, your search or what, what were you, why did you say that? I'm just curious. Yeah. I, I mainly say that because like, whenever you actually search up local, like say local SEO, you're not going to get the actual title of local SEO. Like they'll have like, Oh, you have to be good with GMB with citations and things like that. But like the actual title, there are not many of that actual title. Like they'll right. put like SEO specialists or something like that. Right, right. They're not, but yeah, that doesn't mean there aren't local jobs. Yeah. They're not, oh, yeah. that's not the right keyword to search for. And then if you see Google My Business or GMB, that's obviously, you know, that's local. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And like you said, every SEO agency, like Ad Taxi, right? That's where, you know, a lot of people from my course have been hired there. My, my a good friend of mine worked there. It's a big nationwide agency, but all their clients are, are, smaller businesses, you know, I mean, maybe not like the pizza shop down the street, but like, they're not giant corporations. So just yeah. so people are clear, that's why, you know, there's 90,000 open jobs in the US, because there's however many millions of small businesses in the United States or businesses, um, or local businesses, you know, and when you say local, that doesn't mean necessarily just a small, <laughs> like, uh, like I said, like a little pizza shop, it could also be the local you know, company selling anything um, or the roof or the plumber or any of these other people. And these guys have money, you know, that's the thing, right? Yes, <laughs> really. I mean, there's no shortage of digital marketing jobs right now. And if, even if you're 
not specifically looking for digital marketing there are other like fields of tech that you could always go into yeah i mean this is a time it's a it's a rare time in history where there's a labor shortage in all over but mm -hmm. that definitely it still applies to digital marketing and there's still a lack of skilled workers that's how a guy like you who takes an online course does some freelancing and ends up pivoting to a 52 so you pivoted to this 52k a year uh job you kind of just glossed. I mean, let's get into that a little bit. Like, did they ask you any questions about your previous experience, your degree? Like you literally just like, how did that go? How did you get hired without any, you know? So I've probably interviewed with uh, maybe 20 marketing agencies. I've interviewed a lot and not one of them asked me about my degree. Maybe actually one of them asked me and I wasn't interested in working for that company. Like these people really don't care about your degrees. As long as you can, like you said, as long as you can like, talk the talk they're gonna they're gonna be so interested in you because nobody else can really talk the talk but um what was the question <laughs> i asked i asked how you got the job without a degree and without that much experience how did you get this 52k a year remote position did they ask oh, man. You, yeah did they ask you about your experience how did you end up getting hired um, so the first round of interviews was like an overall SEO interview. So they were asking me, I mean, like the regular SEO questions. I can't really remember at this moment, but it was just a regular interview. Um, and then the second interview, they actually thought I was going to do PPC. So I did a PPC interview. But thankfully, I, I mean, I did PPC through your course and I had an internship that was a PPC internship. So, um, uh, yeah, I, they asked me a whole bunch of questions. A whole bunch of SEO questions and PPC questions. And then I ended up like telling them I'm way more interested in local SEO than in uh, like ads. So from there, um, I interviewed with the owners of the company and they liked me. So they hired me on. That's awesome. I love how you're talking smack about PPC because I'm like, that's my thing, you know? So <laughs> but that's what I focus on. I like both. But, um, you know, you got to go with what you're passionate about. Like people ask me that too. Let's, I tell people, you know, there's, there, I mean, look, there's jobs in both. I think paid search is still more, you, it's more rare because you have to pay money to practice PPC or work with someone spending money. And in general, if you're starting out, people don't want to spend money. So there's still fewer people that know PPC than SEO in my experience. But if you love SEO, and I just had somebody just message me, Amber, she got an SEO job and she had the same thing. She didn't like PPC. <laughs> so she was like, I want to do SEO. Um, so, but it sounds to me like the interview process is all about your knowledge and your cultural fit. They really didn't like grill you about your degree or like if you had years of experience, right? Exactly. Or they didn't ask me about any certifications or literally anything they didn't even ask me how i obtained the knowledge of seo because seo is, and i feel like just digital marketing in general i mean it really is a rare skill and not many people i don't know anybody else in digital marketing so uh yeah just know what you're talking about and they're gonna be like gloss glistening in the eyes and they're gonna be happy just to even hear somebody can talk about digital marketing so yeah it was that, cool. is, that is so great that you put it that way because guys i know if you found my channel oh, and i'm sorry sorry i'll talk <laughs> or we'll little, little phone call there um if you found my channel and you started researching you might look and think oh my god digital marketing and people ask me is it saturated is it you know did i miss out like guys i mean look at my channel right i got like what like eight thousand subscribers i'm not like a I'm not like one of these 10 million. I'm not like Ty Lopez or some shit, like with millions of people that's talking about these skill sets. The average person doesn't even know they exist. And that's why you have this experience again and again, Xavier is talking about where, again, he spoke, he talked the talk, he demonstrates his knowledge, and they're so relieved that they hire him with this great salary without asking about a degree and probably not asking too much about his previous experience. Um, I, I also did want to ask you, about the freelancing. So after you took the course, did you just like, were these like family friends or did you like do outreach with local businesses yourself? Did you like cold call? Did you email? How did you get your low, your first freelance clients? You, you work for free, like I suggest to begin with. So yeah, the first, so I was building websites and then I was doing the SEO for the websites. And then I would, I would hire like, um, I would hire a copywriter off of Fiverr, but, um, 
the way I was getting my clients was at first I was just talking to my like family friends and my friends, whoever needed a website, I was like, please let me build it. And yes, they would let me build it. And then from there I was cold calling, man. And, uh, I got a lot of rejections, but, uh, I, I think it just like helped me in my business sense and how to communicate with a business owner in order to get them to know that I can solve their problems. So, um, I did a whole bunch of cold calling, um, like I said, to the companies in the home service industry. So like I have a lot of plumber websites, um, I have a couple like uh, roofer websites, masonry contractors. Um, yeah, just did their marketing. And uh, actually for my first job, I didn't say this, but um, I had a kind of like a case study. It wasn't really a case study, but I showed where we, uh, where our, um, where the rankings were for the, their keywords and then where they were after I did my like optimizations and the first agency loved that and they hired me instantly. They hired me with the first interview after I showed them that. That is, that is fantastic. And of course, guys, you know, I always, I tell people because, because SEO takes time, I try to, you know, I try to, the way I teach people is just practice, do the, do the SEO and, you should start seeing results. But the fact that you know how to make the changes and how to do the analysis and how to do the audit is the key thing. If you can then demonstrate a result, that is even more powerful. Uh, but I don't want people getting hung up on this because you know it may also depend on how competitive the keyword is, right? Um, oh yeah. How, how long it takes to rank and all those things. But the fact that you had that case study, that's really fantastic. Because now And now you've probably built up more case studies since then. Yeah, I wouldn't even say you really need a case study to get a job. I mean, if if you take the course, you you end up building your blog, right? So, or you build a website in the course, you build a WordPress site, and really after that, you could say you're like good with WordPress because really after you build a website, you're you're pretty proficient in building WordPress websites. But yeah, just um, I started a blog whenever um, like I started a blog after the course and that alone gave me almost all the SEO knowledge I really needed. So I would definitely that's, recommend just. That's what uh, I was saying. Thanks for reinforcing. That's what I kind of meant to say. I don't want people to think like, I think I want to acknowledge you for doing the case study, but I want to let people know you have to have that, you know, you don't yeah. have to rank. That's why people start overthinking it and they start thinking, Oh, and then even mm -hmm. with the site I show them, I, they think, Oh, am I, am I supposed to be earning money with this website? I'm like, no, no, <laughs> My first website, no money. <laughs> you just, you're still going to impress people with this, with this knowledge. Um, the fact that you cold call people, that's awesome. Um, I, uh, I think uh, maybe I'll talk to you more about that at, a, at another time, but it's, it's, that should be inspiring to people because, you know, whether, whether you're in a, in a community where you can go in person or you call people on the phone, I, would I, I always recommend that, especially if you're offering stuff for free in the beginning. Um, and you really, when you do these calls, you're always focused on providing value, right? You're like thinking, how can I help this person? Um, not how can I get their money and how can I, you know, make them do something? You're always thinking of like, how can I add value? And that always helps when you're approaching people. Uh, in my experience, I don't know if you had. Yeah, that. really just how can I solve these people problem people's problem? One thing, uh, I mean, this is kind of like a tip for, I mean, if you want to keep this in, but, um, one thing I noticed is uh, these a lot of these like home services people go on web on like Facebook groups and like market their uh, market their skills or market their business. So what I would do is I would call them and be like, hey, I can take over all of your marketing efforts um, and you can just focus on your business and I can bring in your leads and you don't need to be on Facebook anymore. And they really love that. They would eat that up and I would get a lot of uh, clients off of just that one idea. That's great, man. You like researched it, you connected with them, you thought about what's going on from their point of view and how you exactly. can help them. That's it, guys. I mean, you can apply that. That's a great tip. Um, and But I, I found, like I said, when I was getting clients in the beginning, I didn't have a sales pitch. I didn't have a like, I wasn't trying to manipulate people. I literally was just like, well, what can I do to make your business more successful? And if you mm -hmm. come from that place, you don't have to sell, <laughs> you know? Like there's a lot of sales hustlers out there who could do a whole shtick of like, oh, we're going to increase your traffic 400 percent and it's going to be amazing. You're not going to have mm -hmm. to think about it. And they could fast talk their way into a, a client. You don't have to do that. It's not natural for most people. Um, but, you know, uh, 
And then you said you said something else. You said you did like 20. How many interviews did you have? And was that for the second job? Like for were you interviewing with a bunch of different places? Yeah, I'll say just overall, like I never stopped when I got the first job. I never stopped interviewing. Not gonna lie. Like I, I'm always looking for a better job for myself because I, I mean, like you said, we're free agents, man. And this in this uh, and in this job market, like we're we're I mean, we're Barry Bonds or whoever you said, we're Cristiano Ronaldo. So we're always going to be wanted. So I'm almost always looking for opportunities, whether it's like an, a recruiter on LinkedIn or uh, just I mean, I'm throwing my resume out there on Indeed, but between the first job and the current job, yeah, I, I interviewed with about 20 different marketing agencies. Wow. And and then you ended up liking the one you took the best? Yeah, uh, I actually had uh, I had three offers. Uh, one that was paying actually like 5,000 more a year, but I mean, it's only 5,000. So I was like, mm, I'm not going to base my decision off of just the money. Um, it was one that was paying 5,000, one that was paying like, 10,000 less. I was like, okay, you guys aren't in the running anymore. And then the company I work for, um, I just found like a culture fit. And I actually wanted to, I don't know, I wanted to work in the industry that they're working in. They work with roofers. So I wanted to be a roofer marketer. That's great, man. You got the niche. And then the cultural fit is so important. I'm, I'm, I'm talking, I'm sorry, I'm ordering my dinner because <laughs> it's getting late here um, <laughs> on my phone. Um, but can you tell me yeah. What's it like? What's the culture like? Like, I know you're working remote. So what is it? You know, do you have like support from your supervisors? Do you feel like you're getting trained? Like, what's it like? Well, what's crazy is like I'm the first person. So I'm a local marketing specialist. And this is the first first time this role has been a thing. So um, I don't really get trained much. Well, really, I mean, I, I know what I'm doing, so I don't need the training. But um really uh the culture is really it's like i enjoy it because it's like a really team oriented thing and i'm used to being on like soccer teams or football teams or whatever so i'm used to like having one one goal and that's just to win or like beat our competitors or whatever so we're really competitive as a marketing agency but then we're really like family oriented so we always meet and we always just talk about personal stuff and well we don't get too personal but we talk about the stuff that's like not work. We we we're, we're try we try to be as friendly and as family friendly as possible. So uh, that's why I really like them. That's awesome, man. So you have the experience of like the positive aspects of an office without actually having to go into the office. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I was going to ask you: Are you are you still currently looking for new opportunities, or have you you know decided you're happy where you're at? No, I'm pretty happy with where I am. I think that my uh, I think they're going to allow me to grow into what I really want to do or what I think I want to do. So, um, yeah, I'm going to stay here for as long as possible, as long as everything is correct with me. Like if they're giving me the money I want, then I'll probably stay because they're good people. Um, if not, I'll, I will go to the next one without any remorse. <laughs> that's great, man. That's how you guys. Should, that's this is the this is the ideal thing I want for you guys. I want you to be happy at your agencies. I want you to feel connected and loyal and to the extent that you want to be there, but you always know you have that option. So mm -hmm. like I said, like when I interviewed Kayla and she loved her company, she loved her boss. She's felt really at home there. And then they wouldn't let her work remote during COVID. And then she, but she took it upon herself to look, I'm not a victim here. I have power. I'm going to find a better job that lets me work remote. And she got a better job. Mm -hmm. So that's how it should be. You know, you shouldn't be like at the mercy of your job. And uh, I'm happy, but I'm happy that you found a job that you like. And you guys who are at your first jobs, you know, enjoy that first job, but you keep interviewing. I love what you said. I mean, even if you're at the job and you don't plan on moving or you maybe you're curious, it's like dating. It's like dating without being exclusive. Right. So like <laughs> you have that ability and you can even just go on interviews for the practice. I think you guys should go on as many interviews as you need to, especially if you're rusty at it you will get better. <laughs> but, you know, if you go to um, one interview and you don't get the job, that's not enough. You need to practice like anything else. Um, it seems like you've already had some practice with, I don't know, interpersonal communication or you seem pretty confident and good at communicating. Did you have any training in that or is that just kind of your personality? Um, I'm not sure, man. I read a lot of books. So like I've read a whole bunch of books on interpersonal communication and 
like body language and just how to communicate in general. I think uh, really I, I read a couple of sales books because whenever I was trying to like uh, cold call to get these businesses, um, I read some sales books and I think those were really like good for how I communicate. What books are they? What would you recommend people watching? Oh man, there's a lot. There's a whole slew of them. Um, top, top three or five? Top three, let's go with uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Um, you got to read that, Dale Carnegie. That was like in the 30s, but wow, great book. Don't Forget People's Names. I, I love that one. Um, you know, hold on, I have my, oops, I've got my bookshelf right here. Um, I would say Atomic Habits by James Clear. Mm. And um, let me get another one. You know, The 48 Laws of Power by, uh, what's his name? The guy with the glasses, Robert Greene. Um, I would recommend him because like you feel like you're entering like a like a like a wonder world when you read him. He's he gives you I don't know, it's a weird it's a weird thing that he, he gives you when you read him. But yeah, um How to Win Friends and Influence People, Atomic Habits, and 48 Laws of Power. Read those and then you're like, whoa. Awesome. Yeah, uh, people really like James Clear. I haven't read him too much. Um How to Win Friends and Influence People is obviously a classic. And I think it, you said it was written a long time ago, but I think it has some very basic but very powerful insights about connecting with people um, that most people don't aren't aware of. Like you don't have self-awareness for, for, like you said, even remembering people's names. I struggle with that myself. Well, actually, to be fair, I struggle with it here in Thailand because people's names are very different. <laughs> I don't, I don't usually forget people's uh, like English names, but um, it is, it, th these, that's a great idea. And then the 48 laws of power I've heard, I, I guess, again, I haven't read those last two. Um, I actually haven't read any of those myself, so maybe I'll check. Them out. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you've seen successful people are always reading, always learning, always growing. So those are some really appreciate the suggestions. Um, awesome, man. Well, uh, I appreciate you, you know, talking with us for a little while here. Uh, is there anything you want to say to the people watching the interview? Hmm. Um, I mean, just take the course, take the course. You you know that you can get a job from the course directly from the course. So just take it, take it twice, take it three times, do exactly what Seth tells you to do and you're gonna end up with a job. Otherwise you can't really complain. And that's it. Well said. I like that you said the same thing that everybody else has said. And I have found that even though as I've worked with thousands of people now, whenever people have problems, it's always cause they didn't do what I told them to do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So even in like the own. forum, hmm? even in the forum, sometimes you'll see people ask questions that you like go over in the course. It's just like, just listen to the guy. He he's, he's the guru here. Just listen to him and he'll, he'll get you the job. Well, I'm not a guru, but but no, it's true. It's like, um, it's interesting. I have this, I used to have the same problem when I was doing like, someone tells you to do a, B and C, but somewhere in your brain, you're like, well, I'm going to do B, D, F, G, H, Z. Mm -hmm. And then you do it the other way. And then you're like, but it didn't work. And like, well, I told you to do it A, B, C, D. <laughs> so, um, and that's the great thing about the course that it's like, any if you follow the steps and you're not getting the results, then I can help you. You know, I can say, okay, well, let's adjust this. Let's try that. It's, and I'll give you the encouragement. You'll get a lot of encouragement because I want to keep you positive while you're going through this process. You might have a lot of interviews. But if you're not doing it the way it's laid out, then I can't give you any feedback. Yeah. People sometimes want to give me feedback on the when they did it the wrong way. I'm like, <laughs> do it. <No. laughs> but, but anyway, guys, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, you definitely have to work hard. You can see that Xavier hustled. I mean, anybody who's cold calling people is is hustling. You have to, you know, work hard, but it pays off. So now it's like been, I mean, since you first signed up for the course, it's been about a year um year and a half total and you've been working in the field for like five six months um that's awesome i'm really happy for you i'm excited for you and uh you're just at the beginning so keep me posted um uh you know where you are in like six months or a year maybe we'll do a follow-up oh, yeah. and uh you know let's stay in touch all right, man. Well, it's good meeting you finally after so long of knowing you from the internet, finally getting like a virtually meet you. It's pretty cool.
It's like, I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> I get that a lot, but it was great meeting you too. Uh, cool, man. Well, we'll talk again soon and, and have a great, uh, have a great rest of your weekend. Yes, yeah, sir. You too.